is the sum of two sinusoids also a sinusoid? And this is something that I've always found hard to visualize. So here I've drawn two sinusoids with different phases. And if we add these together, and if you can think in your mind's eye about adding these together, of course you add them for every value of t, so adding these together, can you picture that overall the answer will also be a sinusoid? Because it's not the case for square waves. Here we have two offset square waves, and when we add them together, we don't get a square wave. The same for triangular waves. Two offset triangular waves, when we add them together, we don't get a triangular wave. But it turns out that for sine waves, yes, the answer is that the sum of two sinusoids is also a sinusoid if they are the same frequency. And that's the way I've drawn them here. So I've drawn them with particular phases, but uh, let me take two general sinusoids here. So cos with a certain amplitude and phase one, and another one with a different amplitude and phase two. And we're gonna add these together. And I'm just gonna walk you through the maths to demonstrate this using standard trigonometric expressions uh, from high school maths. So here we are, we're just gonna write down an expansion of this function here, so we have e, and, and cos with two terms, cos sort of a and b, can be written as cos of the first one times cos of the second one plus sine of the first one, sine of the second one. And we've just got these multiplied by e in each case. Then we're adding that, because it's adding, to the same thing for the second expression. So here we've got a long expression with some expanded terms using standard trigonometric expressions. Now we're just gonna collect the terms together. We're gonna to collect the cos omega t terms together, so these two, and the sine omega t terms. So that's what we've done here, cos omega t, and we've got the e cos from here, and the f cos from here, and so on. Now we can see that this function here does not depend on time. So this is just a scalar. And the same thing with this one here. So I'm just gonna call this A, and I'm gonna call this B. So here we have A cos omega t, that's this one, omega t, and then B sine omega t. And then I'm just gonna do some scaling of this. So I'm gonna pull out a normalization term n, and I'm just taking it out the front, so now I've got A divided by n and B divided by n, and we're gonna choose n to be such that this expression holds. So the square of a on n plus the square of b on n square rooted equals one. So you can always do that. You can find that value of n to pull out the front. Having done that, we know that a divided by n and b divided by n, we know that they are both between minus one and one because of this expression here. Because this is a plus here and these are squares, there's no negatives in this addition, because they're both squared, so therefore a on n and b on n are both gonna be between minus one and one. Now, because they're between minus one and one, we know that we can write a on n, or either of them, but let's pick a on n, we can write a on n as cos of phi for some phi, because cos of phi is also between minus one and one. So we can definitely find a phi that matches uh, so that cos of phi gives a on n. Then for that phi, we substitute that into this expression here, and we can find out that b on n equals this term here, you can see by direct substitution, and that equals sine of phi, because one minus cos squared is sine squared. And then you take the square root, so you get sine of squared. So another trigonometric standard expression. So now we know a on, a on n and b on n in terms of this new cos phi and sine phi. So now we can write those as substituting them back in. We see that our function, which is the addition of these two, is n. So this is over here, n. We were substituting a on n for cos of phi uh, in here. So we've got cos of phi times cos omega t plus the sine of phi for b on n, sine omega t. Now we have an expression like the one we expanded out to here. So we go in the reverse direction and for the reverse trigonometric expression tells us that we can write that as n cos of omega t minus phi. So indeed, it can be written and it is a single sinusoid with a certain amplitude and phase. So the addition of two sinusoids at the same frequency 
is also a sinusoid. So I hope you found this sort of interesting and hopefully this confirmation will help you in your mind's eye to visualize this addition. It is important in signals and systems, uh, particularly with Fourier transforms and so on. Uh, if you've found it useful, uh, please like the video, it helps others to find it. Um, of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. You'll find a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.